This is the fourth in a series of video tutorials for Harvest, the urban food production simulation plugin for UMI. In this tutorial, we will set and run a simulation in Harvest. So here I have opened an UMI project with a hypothetical neighborhood. In the UMI project tab, here you can see that it has the Boston Logan International Airport weather file. So the first thing that I need to do is to import my crop template library as we have shown in tutorial number two. So first, let's check the template library that is currently loaded. Let's open here the template editor, go to building templates, and here we can see that it has the default Boston template library, which has one type of office buildings, two types of residential buildings, and one type of retail. So what we want is to have here, in this list, our farm templates. So for that, let's close the template editor. And we're going to go here to the Rhino commands and type umi import template library here. So here um, I'm going to go to my harvest uh, folder, which is installed on my computer here. And under default libraries, I'm going to select CEA farms. So once I've done that, I'm going to open again the UMI template editor and check my building templates. And here I can see that my farms are in the list. So red crops, orange, light green, and dark green. I have my four crop types in my library. And I see here that my uh, templates have the name convention that we mentioned in tutorial two, which is CEA underscore crop color code underscore crop name. So now that we have our crop library, let's close the template editor. And another thing that I need to do in case I haven't done it previously for my project is to change here the emission factor and the cost for electricity and make sure that these values are the appropriate ones for my project location. So for example, here from Boston, I'm going to change the electricity emission factor to 0.3 and I'm going to change the cost of electricity to 13 cents. Once I have checked that, I am all set and I can start adding farms to my site. So for that, I will switch to the UMI building tab. And here, um, as an example, I'm going to select four buildings. Let's say this one, this one, this one, and this one. And I want Harvest to consider these buildings as farms. So I'm going to select here under energy simulator, I'm going to select the CEA farm simulator instead of the shoe boxer. As soon as I do that, you can see here uh, that the windows have disappeared here on my 3D models. And here on the panel, you can see that all the window to wall ratios were automatically set to 0%. And that's because Harvest considers only fully enclosed indoor farms, as we explained in tutorials one and two. Now I'm going to allocate one crop type to each one of these farms. I'm going to put, let's say, red crops here, dark green crops. orange and light green here. And once I've done that, I'm ready to go to my harvest panel. So here under the modules tab, you can see the little tomato icon of harvest. And on my 3D model, I can see that the false coloring of my farms has shown up and it corresponds to the four crop types that I have allocated to each one of them. On my panel, all the values are right now set to zero. And the first thing that I need to do before running a simulation, as we mentioned in the previous tutorials, is to upload here the JSON file 
um, of my urban food profile or urban footprint of my city. So I will click on import and I will go again to my harvest file here and under default footprints I'm going to select the Boston footprint. So here you can see Boston. So now I'm all set and I'm ready to run my simulation. I'm just going to go ahead and run it. Here in the commands you can see that the Energy Plus simulation is running for the farms. It should be pretty quick. Energy Plus run completed. And then it's saving the results. And here on the panel you can see your first graphs and results. In this first section here you have uh, three site metrics. This first metric here is the yearly food consumption of your site occupants. This is actually based on the occupancies that you provided in your building templates and on the values for per capita food supply of each crop that you have in your urban food profile JSON file. And it also takes into account the food waste factor that you have provided. And it applies a scaling coefficient of 0 0.5, assuming that occupants only have half of their meals in the buildings. In this case, you can see here, our site has a food consumption of 115 tons of vegetables per year. If you hover over the bars, you can see the values for each crop color. The second side metric here is the food expenditure and that's the amount of money spent by the occupants of your site on vegetables each year per type of crop. This metric is calculated based on the site food consumption and on the, the average retail prices of crops that you have provided in your JSON. So here you can see that your site occupants spent $790,000 per year in total. And you can see the values for each crop color if you hover again over the bars. And the third site metric is the estimated farm floor area that should be added to your site if you want to reach the target of being 100% self-sufficient on vegetables. And again, by hovering over the bars, you can see the numbers for each uh, crop color. Then in this uh, section of the panel, you can see the five key performance uh, metrics that we have mentioned in previous tutorials. The rings show you the share of food demand that is met through local production in your urban farms. The figure here in the center is the, the overall share, so 45% of total demand is currently met locally in these four farms. Again, if you want to know more about each crop color, you can hover over the rings and see the share and the actual number of demand and produced food. You can also see that the operation of your farm has led to the creation of 21 full-time jobs on your site and it also requires the use of 2,256 cubic meters of water per year and hovering over these little dots uh, allows you to see the on-site water usage for each crop type. Then the site premium is the difference between the total site food expenditure and the operation cost of your farms. If this balance is negative, like here, it means that your site occupants have to pay a premium for the locally produced vegetables. By hovering over the dots and looking at the specific values for each crop type, you can see how big the premium is as it will be different for each crop type. And finally, the carbon balance shows you the difference between the carbon footprint of your baseline, which is estimated based on the data that you provided in your urban food profile, and the carbon emissions caused by the operation of your farms. Here the overall balance is positive, which means that it is sustainable to grow the crops on your site. But then when you hover over the, the dots and you look at specific values, you can see that producing sometimes of crops in your farms is more carbon intensive than importing them under the current supply chain. 
For both the site premium and the carbon balance, looking more specifically at the results for each crop type will help you decide which vegetables are more economically viable and environmentally sustainable for your site. For example, in Boston, green crops lead to a positive balance when produced locally vis-à-vis -vis their current supply chain. This is due to the high yields that can be achieved for those crops in indoor farms and to the lower energy needs in comparison to warm season crops. And in Boston, red and orange crops are not a sustainable choice due to their high operational energy needs. Testing more efficient lighting and climate control systems can help you improve these results.